Libya. It's a vast country, hot, dusty, and dry, 90% desert. So you may be surprised to know there's a huge river flowing beneath it, a vital source of drinking water for Libya's cities, a man-made river that could one day even turn desert into farmland. And as Margaret Evans reports, Canadian technology is helping to keep all that water flowing. A land thirsting for water and home to one of the most ambitious irrigation schemes in the world. It's called the Great Man-Made River and it flows beneath these sands. It is colossal in scale. Half a million concrete pipes have been made and laid down over the past two and a half decades. 6,000 kilometers of pipeline. Engineers digging deep into the bowels of the earth to tap into ancient aquifers. Libyans call it the eighth wonder of the world. There is water in the Libyan Sahara Desert since uh, a million years ago and we have to use it. We have to use this water. Engineer Khalifa Galbati works for the Great Man-Made River Authority. He says without it, Libya's cities would be dry. Some people, they drink this water since 15 years ago now. And uh, everybody happy. Decades ago, oil companies exploring in the south found not oil, but water. This is an access point leading down to a tunnel beneath the sand. It carries hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of water from the Sahara in the south to the northern coastline every day. And Canadian technology is being used to guard the integrity of the line. Here, engineers from a Calgary-based company called Pure Technologies are laying fiber optic cable into a live pipeline. It will allow them to listen for breaks in the pipes. Oh, okay, coming up. Coming up. The Libyan government hired the firm after a series of failures led to emergency shutdowns. Flawed pipes finding their way here to a vast pipe graveyard in the middle of the desert. Yeah, you know, it is quite a sight to see. Some of them are four meters in diameter big enough to drive a truck through, certainly big enough for a windy chat with project manager Rob Budianto. We try to make sure that uh, the data that we, we give to the Libyan Authority is accurate and correct, and um, you know, if the water stops, then so does the country, so it's, it's very important for them. Uh, that, so that's the sound that it creates. Budianto and his team are monitoring a section of the first phase of the pipeline, the oldest. Three other phases are complete and a fifth is under construction west of Tripoli. Libya's ambitions don't end with drinking water. Planners here want to irrigate to reduce the country's heavy dependence on food imports. The parched lands around this huge man-made lake near Benghazi are slowly being turned to agricultural use. Juma El Tarhouni helps manage the water. We will all be warned they are fighting for the, the food. And if we have the water, why we don't grow? But not everyone believes the project is sustainable. In its early days, skeptics called it the Great Madman's River, a reference to the Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi and its enormous expense, billions of dollars. And the great man-made river comes with a great unknown. Nobody knows just how long the water will last. Tony Allen is a water specialist who's studied the man-made river for decades. He says it certainly won't be enough to green Libya. So there's not enough water now, and certainly for a future doubled population, there's, uh, it was just no chance that it will produce the food that it needs. But that makes it no less vital in a country battling to keep the desert at bay. And Libyans will make no apologies for drawing what is to them life's blood in a dry, dry land. Margaret Evans, CBC News, in the Libyan desert.